This is an interesting problem in particle kinetics. Uh, it involves the analysis of a carnival ride. Uh, the yo-yo ride is a pretty popular uh, uh, ride. You see a lot of carnivals. This is a greatly simplified version of that. Uh, central shaft spins around and causes the seats, which are connected either by rods or, or by cables, uh, to uh, angle outward, as we show here. And so what we want to find out is how fast do we need to uh, uh, turn that center shaft so that the uh, seat comes out and holds a constant angle at uh, 45 degrees. So for this problem we need to know a little bit more of the geometry. And from the attachment point down to the center of mass of the rider in the seat is 8 meters. And then that attachment point is a meter and a half away from the uh, uh, axis of the central shaft. And again you see that angle phi that we're trying to determine. Well let's look at a free body diagram of the uh, seat and rider. And so we have the total weight acting downward and the other, only other force we have is the tension in the cable or the rod. And so for coordinate system we're going to use uh, cylindrical coordinates. So we have the radial direction outward the transverse direction would be uh, perpendicular to the screen here and the z-direction would be upward. And there's our angle phi again. So if we start out by taking the sum of the forces in the z-direction, we have the uh, weight acting downward, we have a component of the tension acting upwards, and that would be set equal to zero because if the uh, uh, angle is being held constant, then uh, there is no movement in the z direction, so there's no acceleration in the z direction. And so we can solve this by uh, substituting in for the weight the mass times g. We can solve this for the tension t as mg divided by the cosine of the angle phi. In the radial direction we have only a component of the tensile force which acts inward and so that would be equal to the mass times the radial acceleration. So substituting in the equation for um, the tension that we found on the last slide, you can see that the mass will cancel, so the acceleration is, uh, is going to be independent of the mass. The tension, of course, will be dependent on the mass, but the uh, acceleration will not. And so we come up with this expression for the acceleration in the radial direction. So we get that again from the equations of motion. But now if we look at the um, uh, kinematics of uh, accelerations here, we uh, first of all we'll need to know what the radial distance is out to the uh, center of mass of the seat and rider. And that's going to be that one and a half uh, offset uh, distance, one and a half meters, plus eight meters times the, the uh, sine of the angle phi. And so our equations for accelerations in this coordinate system. Uh, we have the acceleration in the radial direction, the acceleration transverse, and the acceleration in the z direction. And so now if we look at what uh, terms we have that are non-zero here, there's not very many, uh, we know that the radius is constant. Therefore r dot and r double dot are going to be uh, equal to zero. We also know that theta dot is constant, so theta double dot will be equal to zero. And because of the fact that the radius is constant, that means that, uh, again, there's no movement in the z direction, so z double dot is going to be constant as well. So the only non-zero term we have left is the uh, radial acceleration, the term of r theta dot squared. And if we were in uh, uh, normal and tangential, uh, coordinates, we would say, you know, except for the negative sign here, that is the normal acceleration of v squared over rho. Uh, the other two uh, accelerations, as we said, are both equal to zero. So we can set this equal to the acceleration um, that we found earlier from the equations of motion, and we can solve this for the angular speed theta dot. And so putting in our, uh, the value of the radius here, there's our final solution. Theta dot uh, is the square root of, of this expression that involves uh, the gravitational constant g 
as well as the uh, uh, tangent and the sine of the angle phi. Now, our problem statement, the angle phi was given as 45 degrees, so let's go ahead and put that in. And we come up to 1.17 radians per second. Now, to, uh, we're going to go to the simulation here in just a moment, but uh, depending on how we enter the uh, angular velocity, we we'll either have to enter it in RPMs or in degrees per second. So doing a couple of conversions here, this angular speed in RPMs is 11.2, uh, actually 11.18, rounded off here. And um, in degrees per second, it turns out to be 67.1 degrees per second. Okay, so here is the SOLIDWORKS motion simulation. And to start out with, we've put, uh, put on a rotary motor here. As you can see, we've got the uh, speed uh, as a constant speed of 11.18 RPMs. And while the duration of this is uh, two minutes, we'll just run a little bit to show what happens. Uh, certainly you can see that the, uh, the angle goes much larger than the predicted 45 degrees. But it also, even though we're going at a, a constant angular speed, we can see that we get a lot of oscillations uh, in, the, uh, in the motion here. So let's think about uh, why that would be. We'll go ahead and just stop this. Uh, we don't need to go on to the full two minutes. Um, but we did can make a plot here. And so the plot we're going to show is the um, y direction, you know, z direction as we calculated, but the upward uh, coordinate of the center of mass of one of these uh, uh, one of these uh, riders and seats, and you can see that this uh, simply oscillates uh, for the whole two minutes. So if you think about it, we ended up uh, putting on a constant velocity, but we put it on instantaneously. So what that means is that the uh, at time equals zero when we go from zero velocity up to that uh, 11 um, RPMs, that happens instantaneously. And so we have, uh, in theory, uh, an acceleration that is infinite. And so what that does is cause a great overshoot here. And because they're really the, the model is simple, there's no damping uh, in this. Uh, there's no friction to, to damp out these oscillations. You can see we get these wild oscillations uh, as we uh, uh, as we go on in time. And again, if there were friction or um, some other kind of damping mechanism here, these would uh, begin to dampen out over time. So of course we can't really um, put on a constant velocity instantaneously like that. So another way of defining the motor the SOLIDWORKS simulation allows you to do is put it in as segments. And so in this case, you can see we've used our 67.1 degrees per second as the units we have to put in here. And uh, there's a lot of different segment types that you can uh, define here. Uh, I've picked simply the cubics. And so what this uh, allows me to do is for over the first minute, we go from zero up to the to full speed but instead of uh, doing that all at once, you can see that uh, there's a smooth curve here. And in particular, you see that the slope of the curve is zero right here and it's zero right here, which means we have accelerations of zero at the two ends. And so this should be a much smoother profile here. And uh, again, I'll go ahead and run this. And uh, the total simulation is two minutes and since we've applied uh, the speed building up over the first minute you can see that you know when the time bar gets over about halfway and I'm running this double speed just so we get there a little bit faster but when the um, time bar gets over about halfway then we should be at our uh, at our full speed and that's about where we are right now and so you can see it looks like now we're uh, we're running pretty steady at, uh, at a given angle. So again, no need to go the whole two minutes, but I can show you again what that plot looks like that we looked at earlier. 
and you see a big difference. Now, instead of the wild oscillations, we still do have a little bit of oscillation. And again, without building in some friction into the model, which makes it a lot more complex, we're going to have that. But uh, you can see, in general, we've, uh, we've hit a uh, uh, approximate steady state. Now, I don't really have a way of, of measuring the angle right here, unless we built uh, some kind of a, of a guide in to be able to do that. But what we can do is look and see that the center of mass of one of these uh, uh, seat and rider has gone from a position of 2.2 meters, where it was hanging, you know, with, with the base probably being down at zero, up to 4.6 meters right here. And so we can use that to calculate the angle. So what we saw, again, was the difference here of uh, 2.4 meters in the uh, in the y direction and so we can calculate uh, from that the sine of the angle would be uh, 8 minus that 2.4 divided by 8 and so that's about 44 degrees so again pretty good agreement um, with uh, with a little bit of round off there if we um, looked at different values of angles that we were trying to get to, you can see we get kind of an interesting uh, graph, uh, very nonlinear. And so you can see that if, um, if we just change the speed a little bit in this middle range, you can change the angle from 30 to 60 degrees uh, very easily. So you can uh, just slow down and speed up the ride a little bit and see some pretty, uh, uh, pretty big changes there. Of course, uh, there's no way to actually get to 90 degrees. Uh, if you're, Theoretically, you know, that's going to go to infinity because uh, you need to have a, um, an upward component of tension to balance out the weight. And so at 90 degrees, that's impossible to do.